Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. This week we bring you some commanders from the new set, Wilds of Veldrain. Please, wizards, give us a break and let us breathe in each set. Bali is going first, and he brewed the Rowan Sign of War, aiming to grind its way to an early period into the abyss or abuse his life to channel into a huge torment of Hailfire or Exsanguinate. David picked up a Talon, the Kindly Lord control list from Coach Mimo, MTG Hot Dog and Snusuke. This deck aims to slowly grind the match through its sheer card draw potential, control the stack when needed and win through Notion Thief or Thassa's Oracle shenanigans. Elder loves them gruel shenanigans and brewed a spicy Agatha of the Vile Cauldron list, trying to create infinite loops with other creatures' abilities' cost being reduced by her passive. In the end, she's a menacing to finish the game. Finally, Josh went for Ball's counterpart, with Will's Sign of Peace. Cheap spells to gain him a lot of life are the bread and butter, to ritual into an early Enter the Infinite, or cheat in an early double approach of the Second Sun. Bald Mulligan once and found quite a decent hand. Ancient Tomb and Rakdos Signet allow him to cast Rowan on turn 2. From there, he can pivot his game plan with Imperial Seal. Virgi can help on generating mana, or Horn of Bounty is also good to find fuel. Agent of Stromgald helps filtering red mana into black, which the deck needs the most. So in half, just needs dual caster mage, and with Ancient Tomb and Rowan, he just needs 3 mana total. Fossis helps lower his life while also peeking at a blues player's hand before trying to go off. David kept his first hand, despite low on mana with just a land. Lotus Petal and Mystic Remora will most likely keep him on track. He found two of his favorite enchantments, Bloodshift Ascension and Counterbalance. The One Ring is the new staple, so no introductions needed. And Ashok Dream Render is great hate versus graveyard based decks, as well as good stacks in the tutors. Elder Mulligan once and also kept a one lander, but this one is full of extra ramp, Utopia Sprawl, Birds of Paradise, and Elvish Mystic. Umbral Mantle can easily go infinite with a Bloom Tender or something that taps for three or more. Basalt Manolith has a couple of lines to infinity, and Tawashi Guidebot not only helps grow Agatha, while well it can also tap to draw a card effortlessly. Last but not least, Josh kept his first hand. Island and are in Mesa for lands with a Mana Crypt and Talisman of Progress for ramp. Turn 2 will is more than doable. From there, a turn 4 Enter the Infinite is actually doable thanks to solve the equation on turn 3 and rest for the wary on turn 4 to lower its cost to 4 blue. He only needs to find 2 more sources of colored mana and he still has the force of will to protect him. Will he find them in the 4 card draws? Stay tuned to find out. Ready for the match? Ball starts the game with an Ancient Tomb and casts a Reckless Signet, passing the turn. David plays an Underground Reaver and casts a Mystic Remora. Eller, however, plays his Kalintarn and cracks it for a Taiga, to cast a Birds of Paradise and pass the turn. Josh, on the other hand, has a juicy start that he doesn't want to not go for, especially being fourth in turn order. Island into Mana Crypt, triggering Remora, and David gladly draws, hoping to find them lands. He still casts the Talisman of Progress, and Remora provides David another card draw. Back to Ball, and he simply plays a Blackleaf Cleave, and he goes ahead casting his commander, Rowan, Scion of War. He still casts Agent of Stromgald to help filter his mana and passes. David does pay for his Remora. He plays his Scout in Tarn and cracks it for an Underground Sea. He then casts a Soul Ring and follows it with a Spell Skite, which unknowingly stops Baal's plans to go for a dual caster mage line. We are on Elder's turn. He casts an Utopia Sprawl on his single Taiga, triggering Remora, and he can't pay. It enters play and he chooses green, to then cast his commander, Agatha of the Vile Cauldron, passing the turn. Josh untaps and takes 3 from his crypt. He then plays an untapped Hollow Fountain and casts his own commander as well, Will Scion of Peace. Only David failing with the turn 2 commander, preferring to go for a bodyguard for them first. Bal draws, taps his Ancient Tomb for 2 mana, losing 2 life, and then activates Rowan, so he can now cast Ironfall Horn of Bounty for 3 mana, Remora triggers, and David draws. Josh ponders for a second, but Bal says he won't go crazy with David's Remora in play. It resolves, and Bal activates it, discarding Sign Half, which is off the table now due to Spellskite. He reveals Vendetta and Imperial Recruiter, which he casts for a mere red mana. It enters play and he searches for a Dockside Extortionist. He then activates Horn again, discarding Thoughtseize, looking for lands, but he hits a Mox Diamond and Lightning Bolt. He goes for it again, discarding a Plunge into Darkness, but he finds the only tap land in the deck, and Blood Celebrant. He doesn't want to lose the Celebrant, so he discards yet one more card and finds a Fire Covenant and finally hits the Luxury Suite, that he plays right away. With that one mana, he casts Dockside Extortionist. David promptly cracks his Petal for blue, and while they count the rocks, David just puts a Stern Scalding on the stack, much to Baal's disappointment. With a single card in hand, Baal passes. David still pays for his Remora to be around, since Josh is also packing quite some mana to do some shenanigans. He plays a Cabal Pit and then casts a Mox Ember, passing fully untapped. 
Elder is still not finding any lands. He casts an Elvish Mystic and follows it with a so bright Flamekin that Boss House is set on fire. Ooh, 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 f I'm burning my house. Um. Jesus. <coughs> so, let's give Bob a minute since. It's yeah, okay, I love six. It has a Flamekin there. Oh, okay. I just. Alright. Go I'm... put out the fire in your house. <laughs> Elder actually thought it was a joke, but everything ends well. We're back to Josh's turn. He's now safe from his crypt and he just plays an Arid Mesa and attacks Baal with his will, which Baal champs with the Recruiter. In his second main phase, Josh casts a Spell Seeker, but David responds to it with an Opposition Agent. However, Josh wants that totally badly, so he responds with a Force of Will, pitching a Merchant Scroll, triggering Remora and it resolves. Spell Seeker enters play and he searches for an Unsubstantiate, to have more options available. Josh passes, but decides to keep his unsubstantiate at hand during Baal's upkeep. Baal draws and activates Rowan right away, holding priority to tap his Ancient Tomb for 2 mana and losing 2 life. He then casts an Imperial Seal, triggering Remora and he doesn't pay. He searches for a Wheel of Fortune to the top. He now activates the Horn, discarding a land and exiling the Wheel and Tarnished Citadel. He then casts the Wheel, triggering Remora once again and prays that the table wants it to resolve. The social stack opens as Josh puts unsubstantiate on the stack. While bouncing some creatures is an option to then be discarded, he knows that, like his deck, Baal needs the colored pips a lot for the deck to function, so he casts it on the wheel to force Baal to spend more mana. Remora triggers and the vid draws, which could also mean he finds something. Wheel is bounced and Baal puts it back on the sack again, triggering Remora yet again and not paying. The vid is full of cards but finds no free counters, so everyone discards and draws 7 new cards. Baal then starts discarding a land to the horn, finding another land and an in tomb. He plays Tarnished Citadel and passes the turn. David finally lets the fish go. He plays a Command Tower and casts a Cabal Ritual, now a Threshold thanks to the Wheel. He then casts his Commander, Talion the Kindly Lord, entering play and he chooses 2 for it. He then casts Weather Runestone and passes the turn. Elder finally plays his second land, a Forest. He then casts a Sol Ring and follows it with a Black Blade Reforced to try to increase Agatha's power. Talion triggers, Elder loses 2 life and David draws a card. He then casts Finorn Elves and proceeds to activate Soulbright Flame King once, twice and thrice, gaining 8 red mana for just 3 mana spent. What an upgraded seeding song! He now casts Cogwork Assembler, which paired with Agatha and a positive mana rock can go infinite as long as Agatha has 5 or 6 power. Talon triggers once again and it is paying off for the vid. Ella still casts Prismite, which basically can filter all the colored mana he can generate through Cogwork Assembler. Now will he get Agatha to 6 power to overrun the table? Let's see. Talon triggers yet again and then Elder equips the Black Blade onto Agatha before passing. Josh untaps and is once again safe from his crypt. He draws but still finds no lands in all these 8 cards drawn. If you remember his hand from the wheel, he was quite close to a winning line, if only it wasn't for Cabal Pit, since his Placer Kitter and his rocks could get him the necessary cards to win through the Spell Seeker. Life gain and Narcissus reversal for his approach. This way he feels forced to time walk himself, casting a capture of Jing Zhao. He then goes into combat, attacking Ball for 2 again and passes to his extra turn. This time, he takes 3 damage from his crit. He draws and now finds a Ranger Captain of Eos that he puts on the stack, slowly avoiding feeding Talion. It enters play and he searches for his Sarah Ascendant. Now he can crack his fetch, so he casts his Mox Ember to be able to cast the Ascendant on the threshold of 30 life. He wanted to bank in on the Mox and he drew to abuse his kitten, but this is his way to get approach costing only 1 white mana, so he passes. Baal keeps asking if someone wants to do something on his upkeep. David wants his Cabal Pit to stick around, so Baal draws and activates Rowan right away, holding priority to tap Tarnished Citadel for red and Ancient Tomb. So, as Rowan's activation resolves, all his red and or black spells cost 5 less colors to cast. He then casts a Gamble and searches for a Peer into the Abyss into his hand, and randomly discards Sulphur Springs. He then discards a land to the horn and reveals a Conqueror's Flail and a Cursed Mirror. He casts the Cursed Mirror, which enters play as a copy of Ranger Captain of Eos. He searches for a Hex Parasite, and for a moment he could try to pop the Ranger, but Josh would pop his own in response, so he just casts Conqueror's Flail, triggering Talion and losing 2 life while David draws a card. He then discards the Hex Parasite to the horn, revealing Exsanguinate and Mana Crypt, which he casts right away. He then uses it to equip Conqueror's Flail onto the Ranger Captain of Eos, since that one survives Cabal Pit. While Baal has a Dark Ritual and Peer in hand, putting the Ritual on the stack could easily prompt Josh to crack his Ranger, or even in response to the Peer, so Baal just discards the Fidus Swarm to the Horn, exiling Blood Crypt and Dark Confident. 
He plays the land, which opens no priority, just so he can put Exsanguinate on the stack without any interruption and at least he drains 5 life from each of his opponents and regains 15 life back. This way, he not only survives the turn cycle to do more shenanigans as well as removes Ascendant's power from Josh. We're on David's turn now and he puts a Toxic Deluge on the stack, paying 3 life. In response, Josh cracks his Ranger Captain of Eos, which then prompts Baal to respond by casting a Deadly Relic while it is free targeting Talion. Even if Spellskite is there, at least David has to pay something. However, what David pays is actually 3 mana for a hard cast Force of Negation. The board is wiped and he plays a Cephaly Coliseum before passing. Eller top decks and a Shia that he puts on the stack, and the mere 3 3 resolves, so he ends the turn. Josh untaps and takes 3 from the crypt. He starts by transmuting Muddle Mixture for a Narcissus Reversal, and he only needs to gain 6 life to go for the approach plan. He attacks Ball once again and passes. Ball gets to his turn and takes no damage from the crypt. Ball recasts Rowan Sign of War and takes the opportunity that David has no black mana for the Cabal Pit to equip her with Conqueror's Flail. He passes and we're back to David, who's been putting quite a performance on the control role today. He plays an Urza Saga entering and gaining its first chapter. He then casts a Dimmer Signet and follows it with a Senses Divining Top, ending the turn with 6 cards in hand. Heller draws and then equips Shia with Blackblade Reforge, becoming an 8 8 that he turns sideways towards David, hoping he jumps blocks with Spellskite. However, he casts his Deadly Relic on the good old tree, and Elder sadly passes. Josh untaps and is now safe from his crit. He finally found a land, a basic island. He now casts a Grand Abolisher, triggering Talion and David draws. While Cabal Pit is still there available to David, if he cracks it, that means he can bring out Displaced Kitten and keep up the mana that he needs to go off, thanks to the rocks. He then attacks Elder and just passes, not wanting to steer the waters too much. Balan taps and when he wants to take 3 from the crypt, he doesn't. He considers either David or Josh might have an Ottawara, but he still tries to go for it. He activates Rowan, holding priority and tapping Tarnished Citadel for Black and Ancient Tomb as well. So, when Rowan's ability resolves, the cost reduction is 5. He then casts a Dark Ritual and follows it with his spear into the Abyss, targeting himself. David responds by activating Sensei's Divining Top, looking at the top 3 but passes priority. Elder, on the other hand, has a Buzajo, which he channels on the Conqueror's Flail. Val responds by activating the horn, discarding Arid Mesa and hoping to find Deflecting Swat, but he just finds Yogma's Wheel and Mox Opal, so he just searches for a Badlands into play, and this allows the blue decks to interact. The Vid casts Fierce Guardianship on the Pier. Players discuss for a moment and Josh does cast Nurse's Reversal on the Pier, hoping to get a copy for himself before Val, or to pull more interaction from the Vid. Talion triggers and the Vid draws. In response, the Vid casts a Mystical Tutor. Josh passes, but Ball responds with a dual caster mage, triggering Talion, and once again David responds to the trigger by activating the top, to look two cards deeper. He finds some juice, but lets the mage resolve. Dual caster mage enters and triggers, targeting Narset's reversal, so he can peer above the stack and hopefully save it back to his hand. In response, though, David casts a swan song, targeting the original Narset's reversal, so that none can happen. However, Ball responds with his last card in hand, T Ball's trickery, targeting the swan song. Talon triggers and David responds to it by activating the top, desperately trying to find some answers. He lets the trigger resolves and he randomly mills two cards, before revealing some lands and a jewel lotus that he casts. The trigger from the dual caster mage is now resolving, creating a copy of Narcissus Reversal, to which David once again passes priority. However, being last to speak, Josh now responds with his spell snare on Bal's copy of Narcissus Reversal. The stack is chipping away and David now searches for a fluster storm to the top. Bali is hellbent and David passes priority with Fluster still on top of his deck, so Narcissus Reversal resolves, sending Peer to Bal's hand and creating a copy of it. Well, now David has a say in the matter again, and casts an Orkish Bowmaster in response. It resolves, entering play and pinging Bal for one. Josh cracks his Arid Mesa to find a Tundra and then his Peer resolves, losing 9 life and drawing 38 cards, triggering Orkish Bowmasters that many times. Since Josh is on a life gain deck, David sends 17 damage towards Ball, 20 towards Josh and 1 ping towards Elder. As last resort, Ball discards his spear to the horn, hoping to find something, but it just dies to the pings. Josh did find Solitude, but there's Spellskite and a lot of damage towards him, so he also dies to the Bowmasters. All these pings amassed a 39-39 arc, that once David gets to his turn, he just turns 90 degrees towards Elder. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone, 3 hours of fun and talk and the sheer card draw from Talion allowed David to keep controlling the board without losing fuel. Harnfell, Horn of Bounty, was also MVP in the Erectus lineup, 
allowing to find more and more cards to be cast for less mana. Helder was slowed by the Deluge, and Josh was last in turn order, and unfortunate not to find that many life gain cards. In the end, the power of lands such as Cabal Pit and Bozejo goes to show how they can dictate the fate of matches. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Arajimo, Drunken Housecat, Pina, Ricardo, Katerina, and Zinan, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!